Greetings, friends. Welcome to this study, this cursory study, I might add, of the 39 Articles of Religion of the Reformation Church of England, sponsored by the Anglican Orthodox Communion Worldwide. My name is Jerry Ogles. Tonight's study is of Article 13. Now, at the outset, I would like to point out that Articles 9 through 14 bear a strong resemblance to each other, but each stipulates a difference sometimes a subtle difference in detail that reveals important doctrinal points. Though there are many points of congruence, there are also subtle extenuations of meaning. We've already discussed the state of self-will as opposed to that freedom of the will that exists in Christ Jesus alone. Today's Article 13 simply states an extenuation of that correlation in pointing out the lack of righteousness and works done prior to the reception of the saving grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'd like to undertake a cursory review of this important article at this time, and we will cite that article entitled, Of Works Before Justification. Works done before the grace of Christ and the inspiration of the Spirit are not pleasant to God, for as much as they spring not of faith in Jesus Christ, Neither do they make men meet to receive grace, or, as the school authors say, deserve grace of congruity. Yea, rather, for that they are not done as God hath willed and commanded them to be done, we doubt not, but that they have the nature of sin. Book of Common Prayer. As discussed earlier, whatever self-righteous works we do, even those commended of man, apart from the grace of Christ ruling in our wills, are not pleasing to God or meritorious of salvation. Without the ruling guidance of the Holy Spirit, man is incapable of pleasing God regardless his presumed good works. As previously quoted, even the innocency of labor is sin in the eyes of God. And high look and a proud heart and the plowing of the wicked is sin. A man takes pride in the labors of a good son, but he is indifferent to the successes and labors of a distant stranger. That nearly describes the way God views the works of the unsaved as compared to his own sons and daughters. Those who are good sons and daughters do works that are pleasing to the Father through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And more importantly, he knows them, and we know him. The key to assessing the merit of every good work is motivation. Why were these works performed? It is by the favor and to the glory of God that it shall stand. However, if by the accidental nature of man without Christ and his purposes, it will not merit favor of God. Many actions have a seeming good result, but may be acted upon out of selfish motives. A very sad example of this principle is revealed in the betrayal of Christ by Judas Iscariot. The betrayal of Christ was a necessary means of effecting his passion on the cross and our redemption. It fulfilled a necessary purpose, however. The motive of Judas was sinister and evil in his ghastly deed. The brothers of Joseph enabled Joseph to go down into Egypt to prepare for the salvation of his brethren from a perishing famine. However, the motive of his brothers was treacherously evil. They meant it for good for Joseph, but they meant it for evil for Joseph. God can take the deeds of the wicked and turn them to his purposes, but that does not gain a personal favor of God without the intent arising from a holy motive. We find in Romans 7, 14 through 17, Paul's words, for we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that is good, that it is good. But then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. That's in Romans. Then in uh, 3, chapter 3, verse 19 through 20 of Romans, we find an explanation for the motivation to glorify God by his grace and favor 
in our deeds or else to satisfy our own fallen natures without Christ. We see these words. Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped and all the world become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. Our closely held faith in Christ determines our good deeds. There are two different kinds of faith. The faith that is without the works of righteousness, which are dead, and the, the works of righteousness pursuant to the grace, which is lively faith. As James expounds in his epistle, 2.17, Even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. End of reading. We are certainly not saved by good works, but we are saved unto good works as evidence of that faith. I hope you enjoyed this tonight. God bless you. Catch you next week. Good night.